Greetings, Facetube. May I start by wishing you a somewhat belated but nevertheless sincere Happy New Year and I hope that 2018 has started as you would like it to go on. I also hope that your festive season was a good one. I've had a lovely time over Yuletide. Probably the best since I was a little girl, if I'm honest. Yule itself was slightly bittersweet, it being a year since our mentor passed away. So, of course, we, um, we celebrated his life rather than marking his passing, which we feel is slightly more appropriate. Um, we went to where some of his ashes have been scattered and laid some flowers and we went out for a meal in the evening and there was lots of talk and lots of laughter and lots of memories, so that was really great. I spent Christmas um, itself with my mum, very chilled out, very relaxed. I managed to organise it that my stepbrother came down without my mum and my stepfather knowing that he was going to be coming. And that was a great surprise for my stepfather and I think, um, I think it made his day. The days in between Christmas and New Year, they were quite quiet. I did realise that I had a few free days, so a rather impromptu spur of the moment trip down to Plymouth to see my dad, which was really nice. Had a whole bunch of friends round for uh, New Year's Eve. Just a gathering of those people that I choose to call family. And one of the great joys in my life is uh, coming down a morning after the night before to find contented sleeping bodies on every floor in our home. And I wake them up to the sound of bacon and sausage sizzling. So just a lovely, lovely time. Because of my own personal history, which I, I won't bore you with, I, I haven't enjoyed Christmas in a very, very long time. And since hubby moved in, there have been issues of one kind or another. Um, mental health issues, last year it was physical health issues, family issues, or just some kind of unpleasantness that we've had to put aside for the day to try and ignore for the sake of the season. And we didn't get that this year. We had uh, a Yule tide without shadows which was just wonderful. It was, we just had a really great time. And 2018 has started very much the same. Things are looking good for us. Life is good. Uh, so yeah, we're in a, in a great place right now. I've got a few things, some, as it said in the title, a belt, some boots, and some bargain buys to share with you. Now, my parents and I don't bother, really, with Christmas presents. There's, there's no point. I spend X amount of pounds on my dad, and he spends the same amount of money on me, and, you know, it just gets sent backwards and forwards. And it's the same with Mum. Whatever she needs, she buys. Whatever I need, I buy. Mum and I will do little tree presents, and we always do each other a stocking, which is usually full of pound shop toots, silly things like eye pencil sharpeners and um, nail varnish removers and, and the little kind of travel sized shampoos and things. Little things that will be useful and it's more for fun really than anything else. And there has to be some nuts and an orange in the bottom otherwise the other one gets quite upset. Um, but we don't bother with a big present. Mum and I generally will take each other out. We'll go out for a day and, and have a nice time out for a day and we'll make memories rather than actually buying presents. And it's the same with my dad, we just don't bother. But while I was down visiting him, I wanted to take him out in my new car, to show off my new car. And it's always nice to have somewhere to go and a reason to go there. So there's a little town not far from Plymouth called Totnes. It's a beautiful little place. And it happened that they had an antiques and collectors market on, on the Friday. So we decided that'd be a great place to go. We bimbled off out there. But of course, this was the Friday between Christmas and New Year, and there was actually very few stalls in the place, unfortunately. Uh, but I did spot a rather fabulous belt, which I thought would be eminently suitable for Lady Aletta Gabrielli, Countess of Gubbio, to be wearing. So I asked the lady who was selling it how much it was, and I thought it was too much. So 
she brought the price down a little bit and I thought it was still too much so I walked away 30 seconds later my dad gives me a package in which is said belt and here is said belt it has quite an ornate buckle every little piece of it is quite intricate I think it's supposed to be marcasite or it's supposed to look like marcasite I don't know that it is it is either Victorian or pretending to be Victorian it's got this fancy little belt loop here and this particular link has got a stop for the belt loop which I think is rather clever and it has this little ring on it here which tells me that this is a housekeeper's belt this little loop is where the keys and the chatelaine would have hung now a victorian for tiny mostly tiny little waists because of the corsets and this is actually too small for me but i suspect that there would have been a bit of leather on the end um, because this this loop really is too deep just for the metal alone so I'm going to put um, a small piece of leather belt on the end and get a nice pewter strap end to make it uh, to make it look pretty and appropriate so there is my rather lovely thing now if you've been following me for a little while you may know that some of my favorite boots are made by a company called youth rise up and unfortunately I'm down to one pair of youth rise up platforms are kind of my everyday platform stompy boots um, and they're on their way out and and really they're past on their way out they've already gone but I've had to hang on to them for quite a while because I simply couldn't find anything that I liked as much and it would seem that youth rise up aren't making that style of boot anymore which is just you know traumatic so I have been on the lookout for a replacement now there are a number of really nice charity shops in Totnes and we were in one particular shop and I found the most fabulous pair of boots looking at the soles they'd hardly been worn they were slightly different but still very me dad spotted them he liked them um, my hubby spotted them he liked them so pick them up to see what size they were and they were a 40 now I'm actually a 39 but occasionally I will buy a 40 for the width because as you know I have got one foot that's quite considerably wider than the other and sometimes a 40 is more comfortable so I thought I would give them a try unfortunately the style of them meant that the 40 was just much too wide and uh, much too long and my foot would have been sliding up and down in them so I wasn't able to get them but without me knowing hubby actually found out what make they were and he jumped onto eBay and about a week later these appeared in the post and these are the boots that I saw they brogued which I think is rather nice I never ever thought that you that I'd be wearing brogues but hey there you go they zip up on the inside but the size can be adjusted somewhat because they lace up as well so once you've got them to the right size with the laces you can then just zip them up and on and off got a really nice grip on the sole the sole isn't exactly platform but it's quite chunky and uh, a rather nice little extra is the skull and flames buckle now because my left leg is so incredibly skinny if I wear boots like this with a skirt I will always put a pair of ankle warmers on over the top of the boot as a kind of transition between skinny leg and chunky boot so chances are you'll never see the skull buckle but I know it's there now most of you who follow me will already know and if you don't you will now that I'm a bit mad on my candles I go 
ever so slightly nuts about candles and in all honesty I would sooner have candlelight than artificial light around my home I just find it much more atmospheric I just like the way my home looks in candlelight but I have noticed that in certain places my candles are burning down extremely quickly and are chucking wax everywhere. It just ends up with dribbly wax. And I happened to be in a charity shop, I believe it was in Chichester, and I found this lovely thing. Which I understood to be called hurricane candle lamp so I started searching and it's become a bit of an obsession really um, I have rather a lot now the first one I bought initially went on the mantel shelf in my dining room and it looked really nice there um, but I thought it would look really good and would go really well in my Victorian style bathroom. So I went on the hunt for some more. The next one I got is this rather gorgeous piece. The only problem is it's huge. It's enormous. So it's too big for the bathroom and it's too big for the mantel in the dining room. So it is a now at home on the dining room table. It only cost me 20 quid, which for these things is nothing at all. They can be really expensive. So I jumped back onto eBay and I had another look and I found this one, which is also stunning. And this one I think was 15 quid. And it's also too big for the mantel in the bathroom, so it's now at home on the mantel shelf in the dining room. And the one that was on the dining room is now in the bathroom, like this. I subsequently bought a couple more. These two are on the hearth in the bathroom. This one I did originally have in the living room, um, but I've brought it up into the bathroom because it fits better the, the whole sort of slightly industrial steampunk theme of the bathroom and having a metal base I thought it went better in here. And this one. originally in the bathroom and is now on the radiator cover in the living room. I bought this little one specifically to go on the radiator cover in the living room. The biggest problem with having candles on the radiator cover is that I don't have a door on my front room, I have a curtain and however well I closed the curtain there's always a bit of a draft coming through from the hallway so the candles would always splutter off to one side and would burn down in, in sort of half the time of the rest of the candles. So now having these candles with the shades on, it means that one, they don't burn out so quickly, and two, I don't end up with candle wax all over the place. I've also had uh, a few clothing bargains, which I will share with you now. I picked up this skirt in my local Deborah charity shop for the grand price of $1.99. It's another per una. And I thought it was really interesting. All of these ruffles and layers. And it's so pretty and kind of witchy and weird. But there are a couple of issues. 
so this skirt as you can see is way too short for my liking it's also way too big but you know I can fix fitting I'll do the pinch and pleat bit on the lining which will create vertical folds in this fabric as well it was just so wonky and as far as the length is concerned I'll just wear it on top of another skirt probably either something similar in this kind of Georgette stuff which I've got or else something silky and soft either way I will figure it out somehow another Deborah purchase um, quite a soft round neck lacy sleeves and ruching at the waistline this is quite a nice soft cotton chiffon stuff the sleeves are open about three quarter length now then they are elasticated at the bottom well I think it's sewn in but I can sort that out I'm having rid of that and also this elasticated ruching here I will lose that as well excuse the mucky marks around the neck because once I put it on it was just so warm I kept it on um, it's just a turtleneck it does actually stand up more once I'm wearing it the fabric itself is quite thin you can't you can almost see my fingers through it long sleeved quite simple but here's the thing it's thermal wonderful thing rather pretty but very sheer blouse it needs a new ribbon to lace up the front little lace detail not sure about the collar I think I'm probably going to cut it off down to the stitch line here just to make it a little mandarin collar the sleeves are very pretty I imagine they're going to be three-quarter length with this lace detail on the end and just a little velvet ribbon bow not sure what this is about doesn't actually achieve anything when you pull it so yeah that will probably come off you can see what a bargain that was a whole two quid another too big and too short skirt bought on purpose to wear as an overskirt it's quite thin floaty cotton jersey I have a number of skirts made out of the same fabric which are ankle length I thought this would look nice over the top with a little pointy kind of handkerchief bottom on it this is actually the side seam I've moved it round on the hanger for you to see I thought that was quite pretty it's on an elasticated waist so I will have to unpick this stitching um, make a small slit here pull the elastic through and tighten it so that it fits me not a big job not a difficult job and the unpicking will give me something to do when I'm watching the telly I just thought it was rather pretty um, and it's not so heavy that I can't wear it as an overskirt in the summer as well that's about it from me um, I've got to go off and do my tax return Oh, the joys of being self-employed. Anyway, as usual, until the next time, take care. Bye.